family members and extended family members of her family that were pressuring me to drop the charges for the sake of the family. I actually had anxiety attacks. I was anxious all the time. I didn't know who to trust and I actually had a breakdown because of it. When I had spoken to the police officer and I said, no, I don't want any contact whatsoever from, from the other party. And so she was able to enforce that to say, you know, to, to get them to back off. She said, because I had given a statement and laid a complaint, that it wasn't up to me anymore. The, the Crown had taken over. And so it was a matter of the Crown following it through now. The first consideration in the investigation plan is the safety of the victim and any ongoing risks to them or other persons. I sort of set down some ground rules that I wanted to be very much part of the, of the process. Went for an interview and it was hours, asking the same types of questions but in a slightly different way and I suppose they're looking to ensure that it's a valid complaint that's being made. Talking to our victim at the outset is very important and any other witnesses we interview quite a lot of our victims, witnesses at homes, at their home, or their work, wherever they feel comfortable, because at the end of the day, they have to feel relaxed and comfortable in talking to us. Any investigation can, can be quite lengthy. We want to make sure that we've done the best by our victims and have a full investigation so that when we go to court, there's a higher likelihood of a prosecution or success. Sometimes we get a complaint where we can't make an arrest because we haven't got enough facts to back up uh, or give us that power of arrest. Uh, there's not enough evidence there. In the court of law, we have to provide beyond reasonable doubt, which is a very, very high standard of proof that this crime's happened. Uh, now, if we choose not to end up in a prosecution or go to court, it's not because we haven't believed the victim. We always believe our victims. It's because it can further victimise them by going through when we've had um, legal opinion that there isn't an evidential insufficiency to proceed to court. I felt in my core that he he fundamentally believed me and that to me was just absolutely paramount that this, you had to be believed. The police officer was really good throughout the whole process. I actually can't remember how long it took but um, she would email me, she would uh, call me uh, and she would visit me uh, just to keep me informed of the whole process of what was happening. Also remember that you can contact your officer in charge to find out what's happening with your case. Probably the best way to contact the police officer at the moment is via email. And if you haven't got luxury of the email, pop into local police station where they will email and contact that police officer. If police arrest someone and charge them with a crime, they will either be released until they come back to court. This may be with conditions called bail. Or they'll be kept in custody until they appear in court. There's a number of conditions around that person being released from a police station or from court. And these are conditions that uh, will vary from a curfew or a non-association or not to contact, so not say. to offer violence. Now, they're there primarily to, to ensure that the defendant or the accused or the offender reappears in court as when he's been bailed to reappear, but also primarily for the, um, the safety of a victim. When I found out he got bail, I was like, how can he get bailed, you know? It was, uh, the, why is this person allowed out on the streets? And then they explained to me that he's not allowed within 200 metres of me. If someone is arrested, you will be offered the opportunity to write a victim impact statement that describes the impact that the crime has had on you. It's quite important and it's desirable that at the time that the victim's made a statement or been interviewed by police that we also complete what's called the victim impact statement. I put it word for word, almost word for word, because it's really vivid in your mind, you know. It's just like watching a movie. It just takes ages to get over it. And so you can easily wipe one of these things out. You can get help to write your victim impact statement from the police officer in charge of your case, victim support, or other support agency you may be working with. Because I could think it, but I couldn't put it in proper order. Now, those victim impact statements are a fluid document and will be updated um, as time goes by. Most sentencing judges will call for the victim impact statements and take it into real consideration when handing down their sentence. New Zealand Police, we're ever evolving in how we, we uh, address our victims or complainers of crime uh, and there's actually a lot more importance put on support agencies. Every case is different. Investigations of crimes can be quick through to long and complex. Not all cases end in an arrest and prosecution. 
To find out what's happening in the investigation, contact the officer in charge of your case. To get the support that's right for you and your family and Fano, call the Victims of Crime Information Line to find out about agencies in your area or call Victim Support.